escape my bride. Let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of a speed bit of steel, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. So, who was the greatest automotive designer of all time? Not only in sculpting the body of a car, but from ground up designing, engineering, and creating an incredible, drivable work of science and art. And do it over and over and over again. Well, if you were to ask that question to, say, five different automotive historians, you would probably get 15 opinions. <laughs> Picking out just one genius from a long list of geniuses isn't easy. But there are those few giants amongst the giants that stand out. And there is no doubt that amongst those opinions of the experts, you will hear the name of one of, if not the, most brilliant mind ever to grace the automotive world, Hans Ledwinka. The man was born in a suburb of Vienna, Austria in 1878. It's called uh, Klaus Sturneberg, if you can manage to pronounce that. Obviously, I can't. Now, I could just say he was born to be a gearhead, but that would be an understatement. Young Hans was shy, rather irritable, and wanted nothing more than to play with machines. And not just take them apart and figure out how they worked, but rather to figure out how to make them work even better. His uncle Johann owned a small garage where he both repaired whatever came in through the door, as well as built custom tools with his machining capabilities. And at the ripe old age of 14, Hans entered into his apprenticeship there and he wreaked havoc in a good way. Whatever tool they were making, he could figure out a better one. Whatever they were fixing, he could make it better than it was when new. So it didn't take long for him to be accepted into a proper engineering college, which happened two years later. Now this 16-year-old started working towards his engineering degree, specifically as a shop master. The four-year curriculum offered at the Vienna State Artistry School took him two years to complete, and by the age of 18, he was not only an experienced machinist, but carried an engineering degree. Any company would have to be absolutely stupid not to hire this guy, and quite a few vied for him. And in 1897, the winner was Nesselsdorfer. This is a big win for both young Hans Ledwinka and Nesselsdorfer. The company had been around since 1850. They started out manufacturers of wheels, wagons, and carriages, but by the 1890s were also making railway cars, big ones for heavy transport. The company was already putting people and things on wheels, and the idea of bringing on such a young and brilliant engineer was enticing. Also, by this time, the company was one of the largest in what was, at the time, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Located in Koprivnitz, oh, I screwed that up, in the modern-day Czech Republic, one of the longtime supporters of this company was the Crown Prince of Prussia, Prince Henry. And the prince wanted cars. So, the company tapped the shoulder of two of their youngest, brightest engineers that they had and asked them to design and build a car for their company to offer for sale, Hans Ludwinka and Leopold Svitak. The two of them got to work, and less than a year designed and produced the first car to be built in the empire, the Nesselsdorfer Precedent, which hit the streets in 1898. Now it is true that the engine of this car was actually a twin-cylinder Benz engine producing five horsepower, but it had a two-speed transmission designed by Hans, as well as a very interesting form of rack and pinion steering, which allowed for the handlebars to make much more effect on the road. Top speed of this ponderous car was about 18 miles an hour, and was designed to mimic the royal carriages that were popular in Eastern Europe at the time. But there were certain Prussian nobles, one of them Baron Theodor von Liebig, that wanted to go fast and do it in cars of their own country. The first model Nesselsdorfer put out was not a race car by any stretch. 
But with that kind of encouragement, Hans was given the green light to design and build a true race car, and he pulled it off in less than two months. This 20-year-old engineer designed and built a winner, literally. The 1899 Nesselsdorfer Model U was small, fast, and light. Gone was the fancy coachwork, handled bars, and creature comforts. This thing was meant to go fast at all costs. Hans took another Benz engine and with his own tweaking got it to produce 12 horsepower. Three speed trendy to take advantage of the extra power, allowing this car to hit 50 miles an hour flat out. Steering with a wheel, no body on the car to add lightness. This car, driven by the aforementioned Baron, won many races in Europe over the next year. By 1900, a 22-year-old Hans Ledwinka had established himself as one of the premier car designers in the world, and that reputation would grow immensely over the next 50 years. Swing axles, monocoque construction, aerodynamics, monoblock engines and transmissions, all either invented or perfected by this man, and are still industry standards to this day. We will have much, much more <laughs> to say about this automotive giant of giants in the future. But for now, know that his first two car designs eventually led to the creation of one of Eastern Europe's greatest makes of cars, Tatra. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.